So I put up a poll and I thought for sure everybody wants to hear me talk about things that I really love. They don't want to hear me talk about things that uh, were a disappointment, right? Nope, everybody wants to hear about the bad. So here I am again, giving the people what they want. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike here today to talk about something that you wanted to hear about. I put up a poll on the site of five different topics, and the topic that won was eight series that either lost their way or I did not finish. Now, let me clarify it first. This is opinion, guys. If this is a series that you absolutely love, don't take it personally. It's okay. I am all about difference of opinion here. We are allowed to disagree. Hell, drop it in the comments and let's talk about it and tell me what I misunderstood or something like that. Don't just assume about oh, this guy is a hater because I am definitely not a hater. As you can see behind me, I love way more than I do not like. So uh, let's kick it off, man. Uh, first one up is a book that I actually do not own a copy of, so I can't hold it up and look all flashy for you. But uh, first up, I don't do YA, guys. This is unless it is something that my wife really pushes me to to, to check out. I, I will not read YA usually, uh, but she was like most women of the time, and it wasn't just exclusively for women, calm down, uh, Hunger Games. Uh, this was a series that uh, that it was just blowing up. Everyone was talking about it. I heard the premise of it, and I was like, didn't Stephen King already do this with The Running Man and The Long Walk? It sounds exactly like those two books, like rolled into one there. And, and then someone else said, well, it's actually like influenced off of this thing called Battle Royale, which uh, the, the author has deeply said was not involved with any of this stuff but hey again at this point some people are going to have some uh, some ideas that might have come before them you know we just it's just going to happen as far as the series itself uh for what it was putting ya aside putting uh, aside uh what i think uh her her problem was which is just that uh, i didn't really care for her writing style her prose like at all I uh, didn't really care for any of the characters, really, except uh, a couple of them. And I felt like those were the characters that just kind of got just shoved off in the third book, like it was no big deal. So I, I read the first book, uh, and I watched the movie. I actually, I actually was okay with it. It was fine. I mean, I accepted it for what it was, like a tween movie. That was fine. Uh, it, it's not like this. It, this isn't like Twilight or something, guys, where it was just pure garbage. I understood. I could see why people liked it. But then I got to that third book. Wolf, man, was that terrible. And I just could not believe it. I was like, wow, it's at least been like halfway decent up to this point. But yeah, I just felt like that third book just completely, uh, there was a character Finnick that I really, really liked. It was just kind of just like forgotten about. And like, seriously, I had to like read again and make sure that I that I read that character death right. Oh, sorry if this is spoilers for Hunger Games, a book that came out a decade ago, guys. Uh, if there are spoilers in this video, they're inadvertent. Uh, but Things like that. Uh, the, the stuff, the ending was just like one of the most forced things I had ever heard of. Uh, the big moments were just predictable, and I just hated it. I hate it. I mean, I hate Reddit just to finish it. That's how much I didn't care for it. So no surprise there that Hunger Games is going to be on the list. Let's move on to the next one. And I spoke about this before when I'm doing all my reviews for uh, for Light Ringer. And I talk about why I didn't read them for so long. And that's because, can you even see this? It's, it's so black. You can't even really tell if you see it. It's the Night Angel Trilogy by Brent Weeks. And, and, and one of my commenters actually said something about uh, Brent Weeks. Is he said, I feel like he's very hit or miss. And I got to agree because I did not care for the first book in Night Angel so much that I'd had no interest in picking up book two or three. Uh, and now I've got the signed special edition by Brent Weeks. So, you know, it shows me, you know, my real problem about buying books there. Uh, I... I <sighs> It felt like he couldn't decide if he wanted to be YA or if he wanted to be mature. It felt like he played Assassin's Creed for a weekend and really liked it. He said, I'm going to write a book about it, but I, you know, I'm not going to try to uh, cross too many lines. But here's a bunch of rape and violence, and but here's like a bunch of tweeny love stories. I don't know, man. I, it just it was not for me. I didn't really care for it. I said I would try it again when I was really enjoying Lightbringer because I really enjoyed the first three books, but I hated book four, and I'm not even reading book five, which just came out this week. And I was counting down to it. I, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Now, the next one, I, I don't think this will be much of a surprise. When I first read the Shannara trilogy when I was a kid, I wanted anything that was like Lord of the Rings. I'm not going to lie. Uh, 
say I was a kid. I was probably about 12, I think, when I read this book. And it was straight up Lord of the Rings, basically, but the names changed. And I was okay with that at the time. You know, I was like, whatever. It's What's better than Lord of the Rings? More Lord of the Rings, you know? I, I, I was I was okay with the, you know, taking all those, those liberties or whatever. As I got older, I kind of got lukewarm on it and then i tried to pick up like the fourth book in the series and it was just like nah this is and that's when i was a teenager and i was like forget about it uh i want to say they're on like book 28 or something like that now so you know terry brooks has made a lot of money and i'm just a dude with a webcam here so obviously he knows more than i do um i just feel like it's something that hasn't aged very well and i would never ever continue reading that series probably so uh yeah i dropped it rather early on one that I have talked about on the channel before, and I'll put that video here, is for The Inheritance Cycle by, by, by Christopher Paolini. I have tried to read this book, the second book, twice. And I have gotten stuck at almost the same part both times. And everyone tells me it doesn't get better from there on. Look, I knew it was YA. This is another one that my wife highly recommended, really enjoyed, wanted to talk to me about. And so I said, okay, I'm going to give it a try. I made a video saying, I don't understand why this series gets so much shit from fantasy, fantasy fans. And I still really don't because I ain't finished it. But I cannot get past this book. I don't know what it is. It's just so slow in plotting for the first like 200 pages that I'm just like, I don't even care anymore. I don't even care. I don't even care. So... I still think eventually I'll do it. I just don't know when. So I've got to put it on the DNF list, right? I just because I don't see myself finishing it anytime soon. And uh, I think a lot of people, with the feedback that I've gotten is that's probably a good decision uh, because it did not get very many nice comments in the video I made saying, "Hey, why don't you guys give this series a chance?" Uh, next up is a, a series that I have been reading since high school. That is the Vampire Chronicles by Anne Rice. And this is that problem where book collecting can become a real problem because I haven't liked one of her books since the 90s and I still buy all the Vampire Chronicles books in hardcover just to keep the collection complete. That is it's a curse, man. It's a curse. Look, the first like four or five books of the series, I loved them. I couldn't get enough of them. It was like, wow, Anne Rice is like the only person out there that understands that vampires are fucking scary. They aren't sexy. They aren't sparkly. They aren't cute. They aren't adorable. They're scary. They are beasts. They should be treated that way. And that's what I loved about this series. And I was like, oh man, we're getting a book about Armand. I can't wait. And it was dreadful. It was so dreadful, I, I dropped the series after that. And I have now not read more books in the series than I have read. That's how long it's been going. She even went back to the well of Lestat now, and that ain't enough to get me to catch up. So I don't really know what happened there. Uh, I really felt like it was in a good... This is that thing that I said in the in the Lightbringer books, is that I feel like these authors start, start off with a trilogy in mind, and they do better than they thought, and so they just kind of keep running with it. It's very clear that the Vampire Chronicles was supposed to be just a trilogy, because the trilogy was tight. It was an interview with the Vampire, Vampire Lestat, and Queen of the Damned. All great. I even kind of like The Body Thief, but it... I oh, I get it. I get it. You got a series. It's selling. You want to keep going with it. But if you're a talented writer, you can just start a new series. You know, that's, it's easy for, again, I'm just a dude with a webcam. It's easy for me to say. Uh, next up, I got to keep attacking authors that I love. This might be the most disappointing book that I have ever read in my life. I mentioned in my video here about how I became a, a constant reader is that this is the book that basically made me break up with Stephen King for like six years. I did not read a book. I did not read a review by him in Entertainment Weekly for six years because I was so pissed off about how he ended The Dark Tower. I thought that the first four books were amazing. Book five it had some, you know, foundation problems, but I, but I liked it. I was like, ah, I'll turn it around. And then six was dreadfully boring. And then seven was just absolutely ludicrous and that's the face that i was making when i finished it because i couldn't believe that he had done this to his life's work and this is something that is very hotly contest contested amongst uh constant readers i probably say about three-fourths don't like it and a quarter really really like it and defend it uh there's just too many meta moments for me and then there's the whole ending where basically imagine if you got to the end of lord of the rings and sauron was just some dude in a, sh a tower shouting for you to get off of his lawn that's kind of how I felt that they treated that. And then they did the whole video game. Oh, you get to start over now, but now you've got that quest item that you need to actually do things right. I didn't even read one through the keyhole because 
I was just disgusted. Well, I've got it back there, you know, because I got to buy everything that says Stephen King on it. But uh, it wasn't until 11 63 that I forgave Stephen King for that. So uh, it's, it's a crazy, crazy thing. You, you wouldn't expect that uh, from someone who is a big time constant reader. To, but it just it broke my heart, man. I mean, I was following that series for a decade plus, and for just to end like that, just man. And I'm not usually that type. I'm not the type who's like, oh, I just hate an ending. No, I hate bad endings. And I know King gets a lot of things about saying he can't write an ending. He can write an ending brilliantly compared to that book. So <laughs> there we go. Uh, if you watch this channel for any certain amount of time, you know that my favorite book of all time is Dune by Frank Herbert. This is a perfect book. Guys, I know a lot of people have asked me. They want me to review this. Just wait. The movie is coming out next year. I plan on doing a series of videos leading up to that movie because a video about Dune, I can't do it in one part. Okay? I don't want to be uploading three-hour videos to YouTube. Okay? I have to break this into parts because there's so much to talk about with this story. Nothing in this book is bad to me. Every word is perfect. It's dear to me. This is my Bible. Okay? <laughs> That's how important this is to me. The sequels are mostly bad. I, I know that there are plenty who really, really love them. And there is a lot of good in them. And I think this is that kind of thing where you have your first album is like a humongous success. And then you're never able to top it after that. There are plenty of things to like about Children of Dune. If you take Dune Messiah and Children of Dune, that's books two and three, and you make those one book, it's a good follow-up. It's a good follow-up. You just go from this to Dune Messiah, you're like, what the hell did I just read? Children of Dune really ties up everything really well. Then you get to God Emperor and stuff gets weird. Uh, I've heard some people talk about, I hope this movie does well, so because I would love to see audiences react in, you know, in this time uh, to God Emperor Dune. First of all, they couldn't handle that. And second of all, I don't think that Dune, yes, Dune has a huge following, but I don't think it has mainstream success in the theaters written all over it because it's, it's not Star Wars. It's not a big space opera. It's nothing that's going to draw the casual audiences in. So that's why I'm just glad I'm getting this Dune movie because obviously it's my favorite book. It's one of my favorite directors working right now. And, 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 and I'm not even going to say his name because I always blow it. But it's uh, Den Denny Villeneuve. Yeah. Um, Villeneuve? I think that's it. Again, I can't talk enough about Doom, but those, those, the series, it just gets so crazy. And Heretics and Chapter House are, they are, they're a tough read. So I definitely say it falls under the, the, uh, the, that it lost its way. Um, I don't even want to talk about what his kid has done. I thought Christopher Tolkien did some bad stuff. Jesus Christ, Brian Herbert, stop it. Just stop it. I read about the first 150 pages of Paul of Dune and I about cried. It's just, it's just blasphemy. It's just blasphemy. And number eight, the final one here. And this is the most controversial one. If you've watched the channel in the past, it's not a secret. Everyone that I know kisses this book's ass. And I do not get it. I'm talking, of course, about the King Killer Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss. And it's kind of funny to put it on a DNF list since apparently he's put it on his DNF list because he's never going to finish writing it. I wanted to love this book so bad. You know what? Because people that I admire and respect, and I know that they know their shit when it comes to fantasy, cannot say enough about this book. They say it is the best and most important book of the last quarter century. And I'm just like, did I read the same book? I don't understand you guys. And I, it's why I say it has to be a me thing. I obviously just did not get it. It did not help that this thing was hyped through the roof for me. So maybe my expectations were too high. I said that if the guy ever puts an official release date and that shit is in stone, funny because it's called Doors of Stone, then I'll give it another try and I will plow through it just to talk about it on this channel. I just, I wish I understood what people, people thought, oh, it's, it's not really even a great story. It's just his prose is beautiful. What the f I don't, I just, I don't even get that. I do not understand how anybody can say that with a straight face and think that, 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 what? It's not even a good story? You just like the way that he writes? There's lots of good writers that I have no interest in reading what they write because I have no interest in the story. I, I don't know. I don't know. Again, 
you're probably laughing at me flicking the bird at the screen right now. I don't know. I wish I understood what makes it so great. So that's the part where I say, guys, any of these series that I talked about that you want to hit me up in the comments about and tell me either why I'm wrong, why you agree, whatever. Let's talk about it. And please throw some throw some series in there that you guys have started and haven't finished or probably won't. Or series that you did finish and you just feel like they lost their way. Because a lot of these series I have finished, I just felt like, yeah, these definitely lost their way. And um, I don't think that it's going to right that ship. So... Yeah, I mean, that's that's about it. I, I, it's really hard for me to talk a lot about books that I don't really care for. Uh, because, I, like I said, I, I, I probably like 9 out of 10 books I read. Uh, I'm kind of like the same way with movies. A lot of movies that people carry on about how, how terrible they were, and I'm like, it's fine. You know, so I, I like to think that I'm an easier critic than most. So uh, if it's something that, that upset me to the point to where I actually get like vocal about it, uh, usually... Usually it's for a, re a reason there. So uh, so please hit me up in the comments. Let me guys know what you think. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.